This is an 89 year old patient with a very dense black cataract. You can see actually the um, sheen off the uh, uh, lens material and the density of the lens here actually where it's not just a uh, chalky white material but a black cataract. We're going to start with some dispersive and cohesive viscoelastic injected into the anterior chamber which is our standard approach. Uh, clear corner fecal emulsification here and then we would release the uh, posterior sneakia present from the anterior capsule gently with a Kuglin hook. And of course the first priority here is to ensure we have an adequately sized pupil to work with. It'll be important to get a continuous uh, curvilinear capsular axis, a reasonable size uh, to safely remove the cataract. We're going to now inject uh, some tripan blue under the cohesive viscoelastic. And we like this technique here after the uh, sneak had been released. We find it quite controlled to inject very lightly and really paint more as you see here rather than inject too much of the capsular staining to help to uh, stain adequately sized uh, capsular space. We now inject some super viscous agent here in this case um, to really viscodilate the pupil. Uh, again, a very good measure to uh, enhance the pupillary dilation without mechanical means. The capsular excess is uh, attempted and started here first with the uh, sharp tip utrata. As you can see, a folded capsule is grasped and the uh, tear is attempted here. And the tear here continues uh, here in a clockwise fashion. Now notice the capsule here, the flap here that we have is very, very thin and actually breaks apart and falls apart as you see here. And uh, in this case actually this patient here had some evidence of capsular splitting phenomena or true exfoliation here uh, where we had a split of the anterior capsule and the superficial capsule was grasped and torn initially. And you can see actually there's underlying capsule still present, the majority of the anterior capsule still present that has not been adequately incised yet. And you can see the bit of a challenge here to, uh, to do this. And this is one of the issues we have often in these very dense cataracts is uh, a capsule uh, splitting pho phenomena that occurs whereby which there's a superficial layer that's initiated first and then the um, breaks off as you saw earlier. We're not going to use a pair of micro graspers here to start and for the uh, sharper tip here to en engage in, uh, and puncture through that anterior capsule. And now we can see that the true anterior capsule present here uh, is visualized and grasped with the capsorexis forceps flap and uh, propagated here. So just a note here, the benefit of course of uh, the capsular staining that was placed initially already and the recognition of the capsular splitting phenomena that uh, may occur in these types of patients, um, other entities of course as well, the classic glass blowing um, cases that were reported and often, and not often, but in some cases uh, with pseudoxfoliation syndrome we see this capsular splitting phenomena uh, that uh, occurs. Once we've continued and, and uh, completed the continuous rexus here, we'll release some of the super viscous cohesive agent and inject uh, with the hydro dissection cannula here to help separate the uh, cortex and capsule. There's not much cortex, of course, present in these eyes here, but it helps to do that. Now, our approach here in dealing with these dense cataracts is to create a very deep trough. Uh, key point is to ensure that we get deep down. Uh, basically 90 plus thickness, 90 plus percent uh, through, particularly in, specifically in the central part of the nucleus, right down to near the posterior pole of the lens. It's not necessary, necessary, necessary in this technique here to get all the way peripheral here, as you see here, but really to get down deep. We're using a 1.1 millimeter large flare, which you find is very, very efficient in managing these cases. A really large bore opening and the, small, the smaller neck helps to prevent surge, although one has to be careful to prevent uh, tip blockage, which can occur in flare tips. Once we've gotten deep enough here, we will engage under high vacuum with the uh, nasal um, shelf that's been retained and then use our Nikkerman vertical chopper in this case to split across and propagate the tear posteriorly. We find that going to straight chopping here will is, is somewhat risky and may result in a posterior plate and rather creating a nice deep trough like a stop and chop almost but not really quite the um, full groove allows us to uh, get that depth so we can propagate the chop when we do do it. So this is basically a debulk chop technique. We now will uh, extract the lens. Notice the blackness of this lens. This is an extremely dense lens. This is not the typical, um, so, or so, sometimes what we see these chalky white lenses, but this is really a black uh, lens. These are, these are often very difficult to, um, to get through, and uh, fortunately with this uh, large bore uh, Kelman 30-degree um, bevel here, we are able to get through it. Uh, the use of the chopper is helpful. This is primarily a vertical chopper, uh, vertical chopping technique that we're using. And then some lateral separation to separate and propagate the crack posteriorly. It's important not to excessively 
uh, laterally separate uh, for risk of capsule or zonular trauma, particularly true when we have retain, we have nucleus remaining uh, of sufficient quantity in the capsule or bag. So being gentle with the splits are important. And then really carouseling the uh, nucleus uh, around or along um, the tip here helps to uh, prevent chatter, as you see it's been minimized. You can see we've got half the lens out now. You can visualize some of that red reflex, which is helpful here. And um, you see where we're turning the bevel of the phaco tip to oppose the shelf here of the hemineucleus helps to get a good purchase. And you can see that the chop occurs initially, but then we often have to go back and continually laterally separate as we go down the length of the chop. We're going to inject a little more dispersive viscoelastic here to protect the endothelium. This, these are longer cases, more phaco time, more turbulence and infusion in the eye, and more phaco power and continue along here, really chipping away and uh, preventing us from uh, punching through the, um, the quadrant here by carouseling the piece with the assistance of the chopper and the right phaco pedal modulation to apply the right amount of energy here. And uh, here we have the uh, remaining uh, two-thirds portion of the hemineucleus being chopped. And again, being careful to uh, carousel the pieces along, preventing chatter. The, uh, the energy here is hyperpulsed, uh, as we, of course, know the benefits of hyperpulsing. Torsional phaco may be used as well in certain uh, tip designs. And uh, here, of course, at the last, with the last segment here, we have to be careful to prevent um, going through the nucleus or surge, which may engage the capsule. So we're very careful here. Often we will inject a little bit of viscoelastic underneath the nuclear particle here. Um, and we do need to make sure we do apply enough phaco power in these cases here to uh, prevent tip blockage, which is another pearl in these uh, in these dense cataracts, so the use of um, the the use of the right uh, capsular die technique, recognition of capsular splitting phenomena, uh, doing uh, more of um, of a deep bulk, uh, deep groove in the center, leaving a nasal shelf to then chop into, and using the right phaco tip, power modulation, and the effective use of dispersive, cohesive, and superviscous cohesive agents are helpful in managing these dense black cataracts.